uh, government will not be able to address every concern at the same time because of other competing needs. And uh, so that, that's where we are. But I hear you, Honorable Minister. Now, yes. yes. I, I'm just a little bit more curious because as you were saying, this is not an ultimatum, but a strike notice, three weeks of notice after which they will embark on strike. And like you said, amazingly, these are the same issues, the non-implementation of the 2009 renegotiated agreement. I think it's a very simple question. Is the federal government willing to solve these problems within 21 days to avoid another disruptive strike? Is it feasible? I think it is. We have the will to do that, and I believe uh, the leadership will also have, do have the disposition, because I don't, I don't think the ASU will be quite interested in going on strike. So it's a question of, uh, for us to be very pragmatic and practical and uh, show understanding with regards to what is doable now, what is doable in the short term, and what will require more time to do. Uh, and that's why we, are, we have already sent out notice to the leadership of ASU for us to meet on Monday. Uh, yesterday, we, as I said, we reviewed the letter, the submission from them, and all the issues which are listed out there. And so it is our hope that by Monday we will meet to discuss them. And then we are also uh, putting in place uh, a team you know, the usual team that will uh, engage them in the aspect of the uh, agreement, which, as we said, has a very has a historic uh, background. So that we are we are we are working on all directions to ensure that uh, uh, universities remain open. And then some of the agencies of government that have responsibility for some of the things raised in their uh, later, we are engaging them too. We are writing them so that some of them actually think that are due for implementation. So we will uh, write to them, for instance, uh, the issue of um, professors earning or retiring with their salaries, like a permanent secretary in the, in the, in the service, is already uh, provided for in the law. So we will be writing to PENCOM to uh, you know, request them to implement that provision of the law. It's not even an agreement. It's already uh, in the law. And uh, some, past, some aspects about some of the funding, like needs assessment, what has been agreed on in the past, we are you know, discussing, approaching our colleagues in finance, and some of their allowances, uh, so that we can get a figure, we can put a figure to some of these things, because some of them are still lose are not quite uh, quite known and even at the last meeting we had with ASO, we asked them to provide information on some of these things so, so as to facilitate uh, implementation and engagement with our colleagues in the in finance for implementation so Honorable are Minister, we, we, also, we, yes. we are counting we are counting yes, on please. that intervention trust me nigerians are concerned about you know hearing um, these same complaints year in, year out. But during your last appearance on this show, some 11 months ago, you disputed UNESCO's estimate of 20 million out-of-school children in Nigeria. I remember that you put that figure around 10.5 to 11 million, what you called a moving target at the time. Can you provide an update on the current number now? And specifically, how many of them have we successfully reintegrated into the education system in the past year? My comment on the number is that uh, as we are speaking, nobody has done a census of students or people who are out of school, whether it is UNICEF or UNESCO, uh, everything is about, it's about a conjecture, it's an estimate. And the one in the ministry too is, is, is about some kind of uh, uh, addition of figures from some research that have been done. But we are working to address this problem. So at the moment, what I know is that it may even be more than actually what UNESCO is saying. Uh, that's our position. Uh, the 
official estimate is 10 point something million, but for me, uh, we have to be very practical. I believe it is something far higher than that. And um, so we are working towards getting the correct number through a census of uh, learners across the country. We, we are, we, it's a procurement process that has delayed us in commencement. We should have started uh, some two months ago, but we are, we are about right. getting over with that now so that we can do that. But at the moment, we'll be able to get uh, some back to school. Uh, some two months ago, we reported we'll be able to get back about four million uh, children back to school. And then just uh, three, four days ago, I have a report from the Almajiri and Out of School Commission that in Abuja here alone, they've been able to register about 22,000 uh, young, uh, young children for a return to school this uh, September, October school year. And this is just Abuja alone. They are fanning out to the rest of the states. So it's a project that we are ramping up. Uh, so that those who are eligible, who are still young to go back to school can be returned to school and continue with their education. While those who are too old to go back to school will not be given some training in various skills so that they can... So, uh, Honorable Minister, skills and, yes. it, it, it's accurate to say that the Tinubu administration has been able to get 4 million children back to school in one year, right? Correct. Four million okay. plus. Yes, four million plus, yes. Four million plus. All right, wh while we're preparing yes, for this interview, we asked our viewers to send in some questions, and we are inundated by a particular concern uh, that we'd like to share with you, but that will be after this break. Stay with us, everyone. Solemnly swear.